Well, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever this video sees you as we get together to talk about maritime security, accreditation, and digitization, or what we like to call at the Academy, MARSEC ADAPT. My name is Mark Dupont. I'm the Executive Director for the National Maritime Law Enforcement Academy. And we've launched this program in collaboration with a group of distinguished maritime industry stakeholders from both the public and the private sector. Let me give you a little bit of history before we go through this discussion for about 20 minutes to explain the program. Back in 2017, the Academy released a white paper and it was about how do we make America's ports smarter? And that acronym stood for a number of things. You can download the white paper via our website and click on the resources link and you'll be able to read that paper in detail. But basically what that paper was looking at is in this very highly regulated industry, in this very low margin industry, there were a lot of challenges for ports. There were challenges in how they kept up with their compliance. There were challenges with how they kept up with vulnerability assessments and conducted them. Challenges with how they trained their people. Challenges, which have been accelerated by the way, challenges in cybersecurity. How do they continue to mature? and sustain their cybersecurity posture. There were challenges in exercises, how they conduct them. So we looked at that problem back in 2017 and said, how could we help ports solve that problem? And the answer was based on sitting around the table, those key subject matter experts and providers that could help ports. People again from the public and private sector, from the nonprofit sector, but people that had expressed knowledge in specific areas. What we felt lacked is that pool of resources, this kind of one-stop shopping environment. Fast forward to 2022, we, we looked at that white paper again, especially in the aftermath of the pandemic. And we said, okay, we said this back five years ago, what could we do to actually execute? What could we do to actually do what we're preaching we need? So we assembled those stakeholders around the table. We came up with this process to help a port move into the digital age to improve how they did vulnerability assessments, to improve how they train their people, to improve how they did exercises, to improve how they measured their cybersecurity maturity. And what we looked at is finding the best in practice, the best in the industry in those categories. And those are the people that we sat around the table to develop this program. So let me go into it for the next few minutes and describe where we are right now, what this solution provides and how it can apply to you. To begin, let's just take a picture. Let's imagine for a moment if we got together and we said, what is going on right now in our ports? Not what has happened, not what might happen in the future. Let's look at what we can observe. And then from that, let's figure out how we might be able to solve this problem. The first comment here, read this just for a minute. I think the highlighted bullet points are the most important. Seaports are playing catch up, especially in this age where the internet of things and digital applications are driving what ports do. And even though many ports are coming to terms with this is the way of the now and the way of the future, there's a long road ahead of us to get mature to get smart about how we do this and how we integrate these technologies. Take a look at this one as well.
I'm pretty sure we will all agree that the pandemic did challenge us. But I think the most important statement there is what it proved with regard to our preparedness, our readiness as a maritime transportation system for such a systemic event, a systemic challenge. Let's look at another comment. I said earlier that we're in an industry that has very low margins to begin with, but this comment that operational efficiency and profit-driven maritime transportation is what drives us is really relevant to every business, every industry in America. But the key point to recognize here as it relates to ports is as this efficiency and profit drive what we do and how we do it, it creates a more complex environment. And that complex environment nurtures or begets insecurity. Or put another way, that complexity elevates our security challenges. And so as the size of this global economy and its activity gets accelerated, again, magnified during the pandemic, we've had to scale up our operations. And by scaling up, up those operations, we create that complexity, which in turn creates some of that security challenge. So if that is the picture, let's start asking ourselves, what if? Let me propose a couple of what ifs. What if we could digitize your port? And by doing that, we could provide continuity, resiliency, enhanced security, and most importantly, significantly impact your bottom line by the money saved in doing that. What if we could digitize all the ports in the country and create a digital library for the Coast Guard? How would that be used? Would it be used in planning? Would it be used in exercises? Would it be used in response and recovery? What if we could dramatically lower the cost of vulnerability assessments, the cost of exercises, the cost of training? And what if through that tool that we used, we could actually do vulnerability assessments 365 days a year, 24 hours a day, rather than once every few years? What if that tool took out the opinion of individuals in what your vulnerabilities were and provided instead machine learning to identify those critical areas of your security posture that needed your attention? What if the tools that we used were the same tools used by the Department of Defense, the Department of Energy, the Department of Homeland Security? What if those tools were the same tools that protected over 65% of the nuclear power plants in America or the most critical Department of Defense facilities? What if you could have access to a cybersecurity maturity model that was recognized by Lloyd's as a digital innovation winner? What if through a visual dashboard, you could identify the key areas that you needed to focus on right now? What if you were provided best practice recommendations that could directly impact your resiliency as a port and lower your insurance costs? What if this cybersecurity maturity model 
include a whole of community, not just your IT people, but everyone in your organization or in your port environment so that your cybersecurity continue to mature as a living and growing tool. What about the people part of the equation? What if we could incorporate an on-demand training system that reached anyone at any time from anywhere using anything, be it this mobile device that's attached to our hands or the laptop computer or a desktop from their home, from their office or from their campsite? What if by doing that, we could dramatically reduce your training costs? while keeping up at the same time with a tool that was agile, adaptable, accessible, and affordable. What if you were able to access in your port area, recognized port security subject matter experts? What if they were able to share with you their knowledge, their skills, their experience, and their abilities to implement and enhance your maritime security posture? You know, there's another white paper that we wrote back in 2017 that looked at the challenges to the maritime public safety realm. The title of it was Navigating the Changing Seascape. And back then, pre-pandemic, pre-everything that's happened over the last few years, we looked at people, we looked at processes, we looked at platforms, and we looked at performance. But one of the most critical elements in the four Ps of public safety in the port environment was the people. People continue to be our critical element. And right now, every industry in America is fighting retirements, retention, diversity, and recruitment challenges. So the training component becomes a critical part of that, critical component of that. And the access to people that we may have lost or that institutional knowledge that we may have lost, but having that readily available could be of benefit, don't you think? And what if the port that did all these things was recognized nationally by its peers, by its customers, by the United States Coast Guard, and by their insurers through an accreditation model? What if to solve that problem, we got a whole bunch of stakeholders together and sat around a table to discuss this? Those stakeholders, by the way, are represented by the slide and the logos that are up on the screen there. But down on the right-hand side, you can see some key elements of what those partners represent. Security software recognized by Department of Defense, Department of Energy, and Department of Homeland Security. A cybersecurity maturity model that's recognized again throughout the world as a leader in digital innovation but approaches the cybersecurity problem with a whole of community attitude. How about if you partnered with a shipping company with over 75 years of experience that has been a trusted partner providing port security subject matter experts throughout the country? What if you had an online learning portal that was originally developed for the Coast Guard back in 2010? providing accessibility to all that required Maritime Transportation Security Act training? What if you were partnered with a Navy organization that represents the maritime intelligence community or a technology company in service to the Navy Research Lab and the Coast Guard on cybersecurity data or a university that fosters professional development 
through its Center for Maritime and Port Studies. I'm pretty sure if you had all those things, what you've created is the answer to those questions, the what if questions that we asked. You've created a maritime security accreditation and digitization model, or what we're calling MARSEC ADAPT. And I think the word ADAPT is appropriate because what this is for is for the port that wants to get smarter and wants to adapt given the challenges and the current state of affairs that we've discussed through this presentation. And that model, that engine, if you will, the wheels that turn that machine are based on these couple of bullet points. And you don't have to read them explicitly right this moment, because I'll talk about them. And of course, you can pause at any moment to read them more closely. But the, the model is built upon these key stakeholders providing key answers to areas that are critical to maritime ports. And what's also a key element is stakeholders that can help foster this, promote this, and guide this. And what the end result is we create a digital twin for every port in the country. And we provide that digital library to the Coast Guard. And we use these digital tools to be smarter, to make our security smarter. And the benefit to the ports is lowering costs. This is a critical element in our industry and in every industry, but we wanna be able to demonstrate that. So how does a port get accredited? Well, the first is they create a digital twin. Now they might not have the software to do that. Through our relationship with Aries Security, we can provide them the tools to create that digital twin. And by the way, what a digital twin is, is a 3D model of the port and all its critical infrastructure. And much like you would in a video game, having that 3D model that you can move around on a screen, look at from different angles, and more importantly, now start to provide some scenarios and test your vulnerability. Having that digital twin that you can now use to provide training to your security staff or conduct some exercises for your teams. That's where that digital twin becomes very important. It becomes important, of course, in sharing it with the Coast Guard and allows the Coast Guard to be more prepared, more ready to support national security objectives. But the accreditation process also involves setting some standards, setting some national standards as it relates to conducting those vulnerability assessments, that training, those exercises, and that cybersecurity measurement of maturity. And if we establish those standards, now we can start sharing information about what those common practices are. Looked at another way, you look at that digital twin as the foundation, if you will. And from that, you're able to conduct the vulnerability assessments, you're able to do the training, you're able to do the exercises, and you're able to do the cybersecurity maturity model. I'll give you a moment just to digest that. But here's where it leads. And there's a lot of type on here. And I'll give you time, of course, to read it. And of course, you can pause and read it. But what the accreditation model now looks at, this is where the National Maritime Law Enforcement Academy comes in and acts as the accreditors, the auditors, if you will, to look at your domain and see if you have adapted your domain. And again, I guess from my 27 years in the Coast Guard, I've learned to love acronyms. <laughs> I say that in jest, but let's create another one. But I think it's appropriate. And what we're gonna look at is your domain. And each one of those letters stands for some part of your domain. The first and most important is digitization. Has that port created a virtual representation of their landscape, their critical infrastructure? And has that digital model been shared with the Coast Guard? How is that digital twin being used? Those are questions that the accreditation team will ask. And again, 
if the port doesn't have that capability at that moment in time, we connect them with the people to do that for them. If they have that digital twin, if we've checked that box, the O is about optimization. If they've created it, how are they using it and maximizing its implementation in the port environment? Are they doing continuous vulnerability assessments versus done just once every few or five years? Do they use machine learning technologies recognized by DOD, DOE, and DHS? If we've checked that box, let's move on to maturity, specifically in the world of cybersecurity. Does the port have a way of looking at its cybersecurity posture, a way of assessing its maturity, a way of assessing its areas of risk, using a multidisciplined whole of community engagement methodology? Or is this just an annual checklist that someone comes and evaluates and checks off a couple of boxes as they see it? Are they using established best practices? Are they using nationally recognized standards? Are they using federal and international guidelines for their cybersecurity? And if so, how? Does their cybersecurity risk assessment stimulate in person or virtual cross functional collaboration? In other words, is this cybersecurity effort really just focusing on what the IT folks do? Or is that whole of community involvement? Does finance, does HR, does operations, does security contribute to that cybersecurity effort? And if so, how? Last but not least, does that process facilitate and foster growth. Over time, is that port going to get more resilient, get stronger? You can see why those types of questions would influence insurance carriers. If we check the box there for maturity, let's move on to academic advancement. What is that port doing to advance its workforce? I stated earlier, this is a problem that everybody is facing. So what are you doing about it? How have you fostered an environment that keeps learning a priority? Notice I said learning and not just training. How are you managing that? Do you have a learning management system for your whole port? Is the training that you provide accessible? Is it affordable? Is it adaptable? As Admiral Allen once said, you've seen one port, you've seen one port. Not everybody's the same. How are you adapting to what your unique challenges are or the needs of your workforce? How are you promoting that? Is the training that you provide linked to a national institution? Again, if you don't have these things, we provide all of them. How about the next box here, the I in domain? How are you connected? How do you share intelligence? How do you share information? Who are you connected with? Is any information that could impact your operations or diminish your resiliency being shared with anybody? Are you looking forward as opposed to just reacting to what happened? Are there things that you're seeing that have shared with your port community might make us all better prepared? And be it a bad guy scenario, someone trying to break into you via virtual or through your fences, or how about environmental? How about climate? How about utility impacts? How are those things being shared with your other stakeholders? No, not only locally, but nationally. And last but not least, the N is about navigation. 
How do you navigate? How do you do what you do if you have all these boxes checked? And what we look for is an actual example. What's an incident that you had in your port, whether it be an exercise or, or a real life event that you responded to and managed? What did you learn from it? What did you do well? What did you maybe not do so well and you wanna focus on improving? And when all those boxes are checked, when we recognize that that domain has adapted, you become accredited. As you see right there, the Port Tampa Bay is becoming accredited as this recording is being made and checking all those back boxes as we speak. The question that everybody asks, how much does this cost? Good question. In some of the live presentations I've given, I've Ask the people before I've opened up this slide, how much do you think it costs? And trust me, the number is much bigger than the one that's on your screen. One of the benefits of assembling the key stakeholders that I discussed and, and that has become part of this program is the fact that they are true patriots. They're here to promote the security of our ports and waterways. They're here to enhance our capabilities, our response, and our resilience. That price, $75,000 a year, covers all those things that I mentioned if you didn't have any one of them. If you had no means of creating a digital twin, this price would cover the creation of that digital twin for you. If you had no means of doing vulnerability assessments 365 days a year, 24 hours a day, this price would cover that. If you had no way of measuring your cybersecurity maturity, this would cover that. If you had no learning management system available to you, this price would cover that. If you had no way of providing to your workforce adaptable, affordable, and accessible training platforms, this price would cover that for you. And as a nation, it would provide that national digital library that I talked about earlier. It would provide a national level exercise planning and response tool. It would provide national le level data collection and analysis so that we can get better in predicting what, what might happen to us and share those things that we learn with all the ports that are part of this program. So that if something is happening in Miami, we can alert the port of Seattle and ensure that they elevate their capabilities based on what we're learning in Miami. This can be broken down into a monthly cost as low as $5,000 a month. That's the cost to adapt. So hopefully I've given you a good overview of what the program is. What I encourage you to learn more is to click on that link that's right there. Well, actually you probably can't click on it. You'll have to copy it and put it into your browser, but go to our website and the tab that says MARSEC accreditation, go ahead and click on that. And you'll be able to learn more. I encourage you to consider this and reach out to us, reach out to any one of the stakeholders that's part of this program. And together we'll help elevate the safety and security of our nation's ports. Together, we will get smarter. Together, we will adapt. I look forward to learning from you, talking to you and improving what we do together.